LG Nexus 5 and the Motorola Moto X. This is going to be a comparison and review of these two devices. Uh, the top two phones, top two Android phones of 2013 leading into 2014. Uh, my likes, my dislikes, and how these phones compare to each other. So stay tuned for this fanboy free, this honest look, this honest comparison of these two devices. Okay, and just for clarification, this isn't a review of these phones independently of one another. If you want that, check out my honest review of the Moto X and my honest review of the Nexus 5. This is more of a comparison between devices, and so what I mean by that is if I'm heading out, of the, out, heading out the door and I want to choose one, whether it's the Moto X or the Nexus 5, which one do I take, what do I like about it, what do I dislike about it, compared to the other device. Um, and so this is a comparison between these two devices. It's not necessarily a review of each of each independent device. All right, so starting with the exterior of the phone, the build quality, how it feels in your hand. Um, I think, in my personal opinion, the, the Moto X gets the edge for that. They have these awesome, awesome customizable backs uh, for this phone. Uh, this is a green on green design. You can also do bamboo. Check out my other video, video review for the bamboo back version of this phone. Um, there is a white and a black front, and you get a multicolored back plastic um, case as well as accent colors that you can customize. Uh, Nexus has a black and a white version only. Um, even though that there is only black and white, the build quality of the Nexus is still premium. The build quality of both of these phones feels premium. Uh, maybe not as premium as say an iPhone 5S or a HTC, like with the HTC One, the aluminum feels really nice on those phones. This is this plastic is okay. I mean, it's it's definitely not flimsy like a Galaxy series phone, but it's, it's not as substantial as those metal bodied phones. Um, the plastic, body on the Moto X does weigh more than the Nexus 5. It does feel a little bit thicker in your hand. Nexus 5 is super thin, super light. Um, even though it's a wide phone with a 4.9 inch screen, um, it does still feel nice in your hand because it's so thin. This, this 4 7 inch screen on the Moto X, while I like how it fits in my hand better, than the Nexus 5. Um, I do appreciate the fact that the Nexus 5 is a little bit thinner and lighter than the Moto X. So talk a little bit more about the shape and size of these phones. Motorola really has a sweet spot here with their build, I think, compared to the Nexus. They've got this little recess button here which fits nice in your in your finger. You can get, every time you pick up the phone and hold on to it, your index finger sort of naturally goes to that point on the back of the phone, which is nice to hold on to. Um, the other thing that, that, that I really like is I really like this 4.7 inch display. I think that this is a sweet spot in terms of phone design. I think that the iPhone 5 um, and 5S with their four inch screen is just still a little bit too small, but I think that once you get into this 4.9 and bigger screen race that people like Samsung have sort of perpetuated over the last couple years, it's just a little bit too big. It's just hard to reach certain things on the screen. And so for me, I really, really like this 4.5, 4.7 inch display. Um, I think that the design of the phone is nice enough that you can reach everything. It's still big enough. It's bigger than the iPhone. It's a big, bright, nice display. Um, not nearly as difficult to reach uh, as these five inch screens. And so for me, that 4.7 inch is sort of a sweet spot. It's kind of a rollback uh, when you look at how Android phones have progressed over the last couple of years with their size. And I really, I really appreciate the size on the Moto X. So jumping forward into screens and actually which screen looks nicer, which screen sort of displays colors better. I think it's almost a toss up and it's a toss up for different negative reasons in a way. Um, I, the, the Moto X, you can probably tell from some of the colors in here, is a little bit more saturated and sort of colorful than the Nexus 5. I think the Nexus 5 is, is probably a little bit more accurate in terms of its color repre uh, rep representation. But I don't necessarily think it's that either of them uh, are that good. I think if we had an iPhone 5 here, or a 5S, or even an HTC One, I think you'd see much more natural, much more properly calibrated display uh, on those devices compared to these two. But if you take a look at like Facebook, for example, um, you'll see that the blues are just a different color. Uh, you can really see it in the title bar there. And so, you know, I think. I think that both phones represent color pretty well, and I think that both of them uh, do a decent job, but I think I prefer the, the little bit more saturated colors here on the Moto X compared to the Nexus 5. And along those same lines with pixel count, the Nexus 5 does have a little bit of an edge there with its full 1080p display, but the Moto X is no slouch. It has 720p. Uh, looking at fonts here, you'd have to be very, very, very hard pressed to be able to tell the difference in terms of uh, font sharpness and other uh, aspects of the display. They're both pretty close in terms of what you can see with your naked eye. Um, you can see a little bit of a difference here in color cast, a little pink purpley here on the Nexus 5 compared to sort of more white uh, on the Moto X. 
Talk a little bit about the cameras in these two phones. We've got an 8 megapixel shooter on this guy, 10 megapixel shooter on this guy. Um, Motorola X 10 megapixel camera you can launch with a twist of the wrist, which is sort of cool. Uh, makes it easy for grabbing a quick photo. Nexus 5 does have optical image stabilization, which is a pretty nice feature as well. I think I prefer the pictures out of the Nexus 5 more so than the Moto X, especially with the new update that Google released. Um, they're both pretty close, uh, but they're not great camera phones. I think that uh, if you're interested in a, in a phone that's primarily designed for a camera, I would look to another device. Battery life is great with these two phones. Um, I get about a day of use out of the devices between you know texting, emails, calls, a little bit of gameplay, not hardcore gameplay by any means. A um, little bit of video watching, a little bit of web surfing. I think the Moto X for me gets me a little bit longer battery than the Nexus 5 does. Um, but again, probably not anything that's statistically significant or anything that I would say, wow, this is a you know great battery like the Note 3 or something that gets me two days. It's I have to plug both these phones in at night before I go to bed, basically is what it comes down to. So, you know, they're usable, they're great, they're not terrible on battery, they're not superb on battery, they're sort of average. But getting into the software of these two phones here, um, this is a little bit of a rant against Android. You know, both these phones are Google-based, they're Google integrated, they're sort of um, advertised and marketed by Google, they're sort of supposed to be uh, a little bit part of the Google ecosystem, you know, generic, not necessarily like a Galaxy with its heavy sort of Samsung integration or an HTC with its Samsung or with its HTC Sense integration. Uh, but, you know, these phones both use Google Now, they both integrate Google Now differently, um, which is sort of a bummer because there's good and bad about all these guys. You know, the Nexus 5 has a Google Now integration right into the launcher here, which is cool. It has all your information here and it's an easy swipe over uh, that you can get to. Moto X, on the other hand, has Google Now integrated into the lock screen and so you don't even need to do anything. Okay, Google Now and the phone recognizes your voice and the Nexus 5 lacks that feature. So it's sort of a bummer that you've got two of these Android phones that are top of the line, you know, market leading devices, both produced, and not produced by it, Google, but definitely heavily integrated into the Google ecosystem. And they both have all these weird different software uh, differences between the two of them. And so it'd be nice if they had all of it. <laughs> or, you know, I mean, since they're both Android, it'd be great if they had all the best features. And if you had one phone or both phones had both features and you could still choose. And so it's really annoying that you have to choose between both great features of these devices uh, and you can't have everything that you want. So in that same regard, we'll do a test of the Google Now integration between these two phones. Okay, Google Now, what time is it in New Delhi? The time in New Delhi. Delhi. The time in Delhi. So you can see that that works really well on both these phones. So you did notice that the Nexus 5 was faster, and that'll lead me into my next comment. The Nexus 5 is definitely, definitely a faster phone. Um, the Moto X, while it is fast, and I, while I will say that it's definitely top of the line in terms of what's available now, late 2013, early 2014, it still does have lag. It still is slower than some of these other phones like the Nexus 5. Um, both these guys are running Android 4.4 KitKat. They're both really fast compared to some of the other older Android phones that are out there. However, the Nexus 5 does feel snappier in your hand. It is faster loading applications. It's faster uh, loading up a lot of stuff compared to the, the Moto X. And so um, applications load quicker. There's just there's less lag, less keyboard lag. It's just a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer to use than the Moto X is in terms of its software. One other point about software since we're on that topic is the Nexus 5 has a much, much, much more robust development community than the Moto X as well. Uh, as of right now, January 2014, there is an entire host of ROMs uh, and kernels and customization available to developers and, and to the average user uh, of, on the internet for the uh, Nexus 5. Moto X, while there are some ROMs available, unlocking the bootloader is possible and it's sanctioned by Motorola. It does void your warranty and there are only a handful of ROMs available for this device. And so, um, you know, the Nexus 5 wins in that regard too. There's, there's definitely more support out there for customization on this device. Another nice feature that the Moto X has that the Nexus 5 doesn't is the active notification system. And so you can see the blinking LED light here on the Nexus 5, symbolic of a new notification. But the Moto X takes that one step further and actually gives you a little lit up display uh, when you take the phone out of your pocket or when it's sitting on a countertop, it will actually show you the time and you can press lightly on the screen and it will give you uh, a preview of the notification from the application that's uh, displaying it, whether that's a text, an email, a Facebook post, uh, etc. You get a um, preview of that notification without actually unlocking the phone. You can continue to unlock the phone and go to the home screen or you can swipe up and actually go to that notification and read that message. 
uh, pretty nice feature on the Nexus, or excuse me, the Moto X compared to the Nexus 5. One last thing to talk about is price between these two phones. I always quote uh, unlocked prices as well because carrier subsidies in the United States is just bogus and I hope we're getting away from that. It seems like we are uh, with both of these phones being offered off contract direct from the manufacturer for an unlocked price. Uh, Nexus 5 comes in at $350 for the 16 gig model. Moto X, while it started, at I think 580 for unlocked. Uh, it is now down to 399 for 16 gig unlocked. And they did have coupons where you could get it for 350. And so I picked up both these phones for $350, which makes them an even price. Um, and while I think that the value for $350 is outstanding on both of these phones, you have to think long term. Um, long term, this is going to be supported, I believe, a lot longer than the ne than the Moto X will. That's mostly because it's an official Google Nexus product, and so Google will support this in the long run, probably longer than they will the Moto X. Um, now, I can't predict the future. I could be totally wrong. This could have great support from Google forever. Who knows? I don't know. But traditionally, Google will support their Nexus products more than some of the other products, and so you'll likely see updates first for the Nexus 5, whereas you won't see those updates for the Moto. X or it'll just take a little bit longer. Uh, so keep that in mind. So I started this video off talking about which of these phones I would choose on a daily basis and if I had to pick between you know the Nexus 5 or the Moto X and, and you know they're both on my desk and I want to take one to work and which one do I choose? Well it's it's a really really tough decision. I think both these phones have some pretty good pros about both about each of them and and fortunately for Google and for Android and the development of uh, the Android ecosystem and, and Android as a whole, they're both probably better. They're, or let's let's rephrase that. <laughs> There's more good about each of these phones than bad about them. Um, you know, when I pick these phones up and I want to take one with me to work, I'd say right now uh, I'm pretty much in love with this Moto X. Um, my other initial review of the phone was 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 primarily negative, um, and now that they've lowered the price and they've upgraded to KitKat and they've got these new features built into the phone, they've improved the camera. I think in general, I like the build quality of the phone. I like the fact that it's customized. It's a little bit of you know shows a little bit of my character and what I like in a device. Um, the active notifications are awesome. The Google Now integration is awesome. Uh, it's a really 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 slick phone. I really like the Moto X. Um, however. If I want to run around and play with different ROMs, if I want a device that I know is going to be rock solid with a great camera um, that's thin, that's light, that fits well in my hand, that I can uh, really rely on, you know, I know it's going to be fast, I definitely appreciate the Nexus 5. And so I think that for me, if I, in a perfect world, and I've been saying this forever, there's still no perfect Android phone, if you could take all the great features of this Nexus 5, the software support, the camera, you know, and squeeze all that into this Moto X, um, I would, this would be the perfect Android phone. I mean, a customizable phone with direct updates from Google, with all the great Google Now integration, um, this would be the perfect device. But unfortunately, we're not there yet. So hopefully, we'll improve that over the next couple months or next couple years uh, as we progress and as things change. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.